G'day guys, m 10 Tam here. Uh, today we'll be learning about light emitters within the Octane to Blender plugin. Sorry I haven't uploaded anything in about a week. Um, I recorded about five episodes, uh, spent the time editing them, processing them and uploading them. I'm currently rendering a project at TAFE, which I'm currently working on. Shameless self-plug, now compositing it within Nuke. Everything is textured. Models were already made. But yeah, slowly making my way into the big undertaking of visual effects. Anyway, enough about that and back to the tutorial. So, uh, today we're going to learn about uh, light emitters. I'll be uploading this scene to the um, Mega for uploading and everything. Um, I'm just going to make a quick scene uh, which will show off the best way to show the emitters. I'll probably skip this, but um, yeah. The first one we'll be doing is the plane. But first we have to set our scene accordingly using the right textures and such. Uh, so, if you were to press render everything is dark. However, if you go to Diffuse, Octane, Matte. Okay, so once you've set up your scene uh, with this, or with one I presented you, um, we have to click on the plane. You have to go to the Node Editor, uh, click on the Diffuse, get the Diffuse Mat, Shift A, Octane, Emission, and click on texture emission. From here you can then go to the emission tab. From there you can now render your scene. Now as you can see it is facing the wrong way. Why is that? Well we're gonna have to rotate it because whenever you are whenever you summon a plane the normal um, that Octane picks is the other way. Extremely annoying but easily fixed. So here we are just quickly face it down so it's hitting the ground so we have to make this a bit more bright so let's see the octane texture emission settings we have the efficiency power and distribution and the sample rating uh, the power is pretty much self-explanatory is the power of the light. You can put image textures, float textures, RGB spectrum, shaders within this power spectrum which works hand in hand. Okay so we, first we have the efficiency. The, infin the efficiency is pretty much the option that you can put pretty much a float texture, image texture, a RGB spectrum which will incorporate the changes you have made. Um, just let's just have a quick, te quick little test here. RGB spectrum. You can have put images in it. Abstract background. I just got from my desktop. Do not know what it is. And also, you can even put some generators in there. Whoops, wrong one. As you can see. Also with IS lights, which we'll touch upon later. Next is the power. The power is pretty much the power of the lights. You cannot really incorporate much within the power option apart from a float texture and such. This is the distribution. The distribution is can be controlled pretty much by a float texture or an IES file or a PNG image. Same as efficiency. Both can go hand in hand. Next is the sampling rate. Um, it's pretty much which uh, samples you want the light to have. Let's just say that you want to have um, uh, some sort of light that gets better sampled than other previous lights, whether the light is closer to the camera or not. So you can bump this up to your liking. And next we have orientation, which doesn't really work right now. Alright, so... Um, that is the texture emission uh, node. 
Now, um, you can also use this on not only plain... I'm kind of rehashing the standalone one I did back in, like, 2011. Uh, you can also use different objects for light emitters, such as this, as you can see. Um, however, there's pros and cons with this. Um, but, yeah, watch my previous video tutorial on it. So, next is the... Black Bloody Emission. Black Bloody Emission is a pretty much a more photorealistic or physical light, as you can see. Um, so first is the temperature. The temperature is pretty much the. Let me just turn this off a bit. Is pretty much the uh, the measurement of actual lights. So if you were to get a rust so it's pretty much the temperature you can get actual um, lights uh, numbers for it. Obviously the blue is a lot more colder and the highs is much more higher. Um, you just have to look up, you know, incandescent light bulbs, the I think it's the tungsten um, the halogen, I think it is. Um, but yeah, look that up and you can get some sweet photorealistic lighting. Uh, the power is pretty much the power, obviously, and the distribution and the efficiency is already explained in the others. And you also have the sample rate, which is also cool. So next is the IES light, which I'm a very uh, passionate user of. So let's just align this up over here. Let's go back to the emission, which is Shift A, Octane Emission, and go to Texture Emission, and put that to the wall. Turn the power up. Alright, so I'll upload the IS lights. I think they... I forgot. I think I got them like two years ago. Hopefully there's no copyright against them. If there is, then I'll remove it. If not, I'll only put up one file. Um, so, use it at your own risk. Um, let's get the Octane... Let's go to... Uh, so, Shift A, Octane Texture, Float Image and put this to the distribution. Next, um, uh, you're probably wondering why um, you cannot put IES lights in. Um, it's probably not due to my knowledge, or if it hasn't been implemented yet, but you, but you cannot put IES lights in. If you can, I do apologize. Um, but uh, try Blender cannot read the IS lights on from what I've from excuse me from what I've seen so far, um, but if you want to learn how to use that, um, look up my previous Octane Emissions tutorial, um, and hopefully that could be put into Blender soon. Um, uh, if you are to put an IS light in, you're going to have to use the distribution tab for that. But until then, that is using lights within Octane Render Blender. Uh, see you next time.